Hey there everyone, it's me, Old Movie Master. Stick around because I'm going to be talking to you guys about the 10 worst movies that you can purchase at Dollar Tree. So the Dollar Tree is notorious for a lot of things. They have kitchen supplies, they have stuff to clean your car. Uh, I pick up my shaving cream at the Dollar Tree and a bunch of other things, uh, especially a good breakfast burrito that they have. That's only a dollar. It's probably packed with a bunch of sodium, but every now and then I don't think it hurts. But one thing that does hurt, <laughs> hurts a lot right here, is buying their really bad movies. I know they're just a dollar, but sitting through them, because I have a tendency to actually sit down and watch all the movies that I purchase. I, I don't like leaving halfway even if it's terrible and i plan to actually review some of these movies for the second channel speaking of which if you're not subscribed a friend and i do videos uh, on another channel called dumb down where we do video summaries for all type of movies horror action anime you name it and if you have suggestions please leave it in the comment section down below and we actually just did a, a video summary for the most recent bruce willis movie which is awful terrible probably his worst movie yet he does all these director video movies that are trash and the most recent one's called out of death uh it's i'll leave it on the comment section down below for you guys to see it so let's start off with the list number 10 number 10 is a movie richard dreyfus called astronaut i bought this on blu-ray it's released through echo bridge the cover looked pretty interesting and richard dreyfus is a pretty good actor so i thought this is probably a good movie it's probably a low budget movie a drama and this is probably the least offensive movie on this list but it's boring Oh boy, is it boring. It's so simplistic. It's just a guy who wants to go to space. He has a dream of going to space. And the only person who is there to support him is his uh, grandson. His daughter doesn't believe in him. His son-in-law doesn't believe in him. They want to put him in a retirement home. And it just keeps going on in circles and circles and doesn't get to the point. And f I think the movie's only 90 minutes. And it just drags and drags and drags. So number 10 is Astronaut. Number 9 is a movie that you've probably seen at Dollar Tree several times because they have the whole franchise there. And that's Robert. Robert's probably the worst doll possession movie I've ever seen. I've actually done a video summary on this movie. You can find it on the description down below. I bought a double feature that had Robert and I think Curse of Robert. I probably won't watch the second one, and if I do, actually I think I own some of the other ones in my collection. So I might have to sit through all of them and do a video summary and then get rid of them. Because the first one alone is just so boring. Nothing happens in the movie. You're waiting to see the doll to do something, and you have to wait until like the last five minutes of the movie for something to happen with the doll. It's extremely low budget. This movie makes Annabelle look like a masterpiece. One of the worst movies I've purchased at Dollar Tree. I don't recommend it at all. Not even as a so bad it's good kind of movie. It's just bad. Number eight is Scrawl. This movie is incomprehensible. I thought this movie was going to be kind of okay just because I saw on the cover that it had Daisy Ridley and from Star Wars. And she's barely in this movie. She's probably in this movie for like five minutes and they sprinkle her footage throughout the movie. So you see like 30 seconds here, another 30 seconds there, and she barely has any lines in this movie. I don't even remember what the movie was about. It's, it was shot in the UK. This was shot before she did the Star Wars movies, I believe. It's very, very low budget. You can barely see what's going on sometimes because they jump from one thing to the next and it has no cohesion. And I sat down to the whole thing and I fell asleep twice watching this movie. So unless you want, you know, something to help you fall asleep, and sure, pick up Scrawl. The cover actually looks pretty cool. Like, you look at the cover, I'm gonna leave it right here, it looks like a low-budget horror movie that you probably would add to your collection. But in reality, it's just really, really bad. This was released through Wild Eye, and Wild Eye releases a lot of pretty decent, you know, low-budget horror movies, but sometimes they release trash like Scrawl, so avoid this one like the plague. Number seven is Chimera Strain. Again, I'm a sucker for bad movies, but I'm also a sucker for slipcovers. I see a slipcover in a movie, and it automatically increases the value of the movie for some reason in my mind. I don't know why. This is a sci-fi movie that, again, you see the cover and you're like, oh, this looks pretty interesting. The cover kind of looks like a movie called Morgan. It's nowhere near as good as that movie. It's really, really bad. It's, from what I remember, the plot was he's trying to find a way to bring back his dead children. He sees, like, visions of them in the background as he's, as he's working on this experiment. And there's these evil scientists who are funding his project. It really leads to nothing. It's just boring. Um, some of the cinematography is okay. But then there's scenes that are shot inside the lab that are so dark you can't really tell what's going on. For a dollar... Actually, no, don't buy this. Don't watch this. It's, it's really bad. Again, maybe if you want to fall asleep, play it in the background, you'll probably knock out in the first 15 minutes. Number six is American Poltergeist. The Curse of Lily Ratched. 
what a title. There's two movies in Dollar Tree that are named the same. They're both called American Poltergeist. I've only seen this version, not this version. This one, I've seen better acting in pornos. Seriously, the opening of this movie is two girls who are killed by the spirit, and then it jumps to these other two girls who buy something at a vintage, like, antique store, and they try to sell it to this guy who has this ghost kind of show on the internet, and he's kind of a fraud, and then, of course, the evil gets awakened, and, and it starts killing people, but it has so such bad acting. I, literally, I've seen better acting in pornos. This one, I literally had to pause several times, go eat, go for a walk. Like, I couldn't even fall asleep to this movie, just in shock of how terrible it was. Don't be tempted to buy this movie even for a dollar. It's not worth it. Number five is Dark Was the Night, with Timothy Oliphant and Marissa Tomei. I picked this up on Blu-ray at Dollar Tree only because of those two actors, and Timothy Oliphant is barely in this movie. Marissa Tomei spends most of the movie crying. The actor who plays the son of Marissa Tomei does a pretty good job. Actually, the acting is not bad in this movie. This is probably a movie that would put lower on the list, and the only reason I put it higher on the list is just because it's depressing. It's incredibly depressing, and not much happens in the movie. The story revolves around Timothy Oliphant, who defends the family, and he gets killed in the process, and the movie flash forwards to a year later, and they're processing the grief. And that's the whole movie. That's the whole movie, and it's just hard to sit through. Like, you want something to happen to the family where, like, okay, they're, they're going to the grief, but they're changing as characters. They're doing something that will grow the story, but it really doesn't happen, so I don't recommend it. Number four, this is a movie that I picked up only because I love westerns. I used to watch westerns all the time with my old man, and whenever I see a western, even if it's a low-budget movie, I pick it up. And this is probably the worst western I've ever seen. Jesse James vs. The Black Train. The director of this movie has done movies like The Confederate, Kill Calvary, a bunch of like low-budget, you know, westerns. And most of them are bad, but you can actually get through them. This one, I had a hard time getting through. You can actually watch this movie for free on YouTube, and you can watch it also on Tubi and Popcorn Flex. It's all over the place. And I didn't know at the time. Had I known, I would have not picked up the DVD. But the movie itself, it has some of the worst acting I've ever seen. It's very stilted. You can tell that they were directed to read the lines, cut, read the line again, cut. So... It never feels like it's flowing naturally. It feels like they're either reading from cue cards or someone's handing the script to read it. And you can tell that they're reading it. It's so obvious. Um, terrible sound effects. Terrible everything. I don't even remember the plot of this movie. And I can remember most terrible plots. That's how bad this movie was. Number three, Paranormal Entity. I've seen most of the Paranormal Activity movies. They're terrible. They're not very good. But I saw the cover for this movie, I was like, ooh, this might be pretty good, you know, in a so bad it's good kind of way. No, it's just bad. This is made by the same people who did Robert. Because it has some of the same actors, has pretty much the same type of lighting, it was shot in the UK also, and it's just as boring. Nothing happens in this movie. It's about a family who moves into a house that's possessed, and certain things move, and they hear noises, and the father doesn't believe the daughter, oh, you're crazy, you know, you know, stop bothering me, I'm trying to sleep. And eventually he believes the daughter, they try to find like a medium or someone who can take out the possession. And then at the end, you finally see something happening. And by that, by that point, you're already like done with the movie. And the movie's not that long, but it drags. It just drags so much. Number two, Distorted. Oh god, Christina Ricci. Uh, I love her movies. Pumpkin, Prozac Nation, uh, Cursed. She's appeared in a lot of movies that I like. And some of those movies aren't very good, but they're fun to watch. Especially Pumpkin. But this one, this literally gave me a headache. I thought I was having a seizure at one point because of the way it shot. This movie is completely confusing. I barely remember the plot. All I remember is that Christina Ricci meets John Cusack and John Cusack is into these conspiracy theories and he's telling her, oh, you're not crazy. And in between you have these weird camera angles. They tried doing these like weird POV shots. Most of them don't work. And there's some that have these flashing lights at you. And you're like... I'm gonna have a seizure. Like This one, I had to force myself to finish. It took me, I think, four nights to finish. And I still don't remember the plot. 
literally don't watch this movie you're gonna have a headache afterwards the only good thing about this movie actually is seeing Cusack wearing the same baseball cap that Cool Duder uses and Cool Duder has actually mentioned it in a lot of his videos that John Cusack is wearing the same baseball cap that he's wearing in uh, Distorted looks like me in here he's wearing my hat my exact Cool Duder hat in this oh, movie the whole cool. one the exact brand and everything he must have copied you he saw probably you. speaking of Cool Duder this is an honorable mention this is not number one this is an honorable mention terrible movie and I think it's also made by the same people who made Paranormal Entity and Robert. It's a movie called Bride of Scarecrow. This was... Oof. I don't know why I didn't include this as number one. This could have been number one, but number one is worse. The plot of this movie is that there's a scarecrow who's looking for his wife and there's someone who is a descendant and inherits the house where this woman used to live and now all her friends come to see the house and they're being killed one by one very very slowly in terrible terrible ways and I don't mean terrible and gory I mean terrible as in it's just shot awful and the only good thing about this movie is a short scene where you see Cool Duder explain the whole backstory of the Scarecrow and you see it shot with the movies he has in the background so it's like he shot this at his house for probably a few hours. Number one, the worst movie I've purchased at Dollar Tree is a movie called Anne. The cover looked pretty interesting. I was like, oh, maybe this is, you know, an okay movie. No, no, no. This was really, really bad. Nothing happens in this movie. And I've said this a lot for most of the movies, but literally nothing happens. There's no plot. It's just a woman sitting down in her house. She has schizophrenia, I guess. They don't really explain. There's barely any dialogue from what I remember. And it's just... A woman seeing weird visions, she sees dead people, she has these dolls, she walks outside to get her mail and she goes back inside. That's it. That's the whole movie. And I paid only a dollar for it and I felt, I feel robbed. I feel like I was violated after seeing this movie because it's just, it was a torture to sit through. It really was. <sighs> Again, I like watching trash, but not this type of trash. So if you see any of these titles... At Dollar Tree, you know. Again, I uh, I apologize if you like any of these movies. I don't know who, who does, but if you do, um, hey, you know, all the power to you. But again, sometimes just because it's a dollar and it has a cool cover, it's not worth it. These movies are not worth it. I'll probably do a video on the ten best movies that you can purchase at Dollar Tree. And trust me, Dollar Tree does have good deals. You know, but sometimes they don't. <laughs> so uh, I'll think better next time when I go to Dollar Tree and I see movies, you know. I'll try to look up reviews. And it just so happens. I don't know if this is, if this is a conspiracy theory. I don't believe in any of those theories. But as a joke, I'm going to say that every single time I go to Dollar Tree, I have bad reception. So I can't look up the movie. I can't look up the ratings. Maybe it's the Dollar Tree that I frequent. So <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you stuck to the end, thank you so much. Um, please leave your thoughts on some of the movies that you've seen at Dollar Tree that you probably purchased or that you've seen somewhere else and you think they're terrible. Let me know. I want to know. Let me know in the comments section down below. And again, check out the dumb down on the movie Out of Death. It's already up. It went up yesterday, Sunday afternoon. And next week, I'm going to be doing a dumb down for a movie, another terrible movie called Night of the Sicario. This is like a knockoff of the Sicario movies. It's completely unrelated. That one will go up next week. And the week afterwards, I will be doing the James Bond movies, the Daniel Craig James Bond movies. And it will be pretty much a wrap up, kind of like preparing yourself for No Time to Die. And hopefully this time it comes out because I, that's probably the most anticipated movie, for at least for me, uh, for 2021. The movie was supposed to be released in 2019, even before the pandemic, so... It's, um, it's something. But anyway, guys, thank you so much, and I'll be seeing you guys next time.